Good evening and good morning, Daniel in the UK. Hi guys, how are you? I'm just going to bring up your comments over here so I can see you. Sharon was here early. Good on you, Sharon. Can you hear me, everybody? Hi. Hi, Daniel in the UK, 9.30 in the morning. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. That's so cool. G'day, Mark. Hi, Sandy. G'day, Stu. Hi, Corinne. Hey, Julie. Good evening. Hey, Lyndon, you got your CD in the post today. Who else got their CD in the post either today or yesterday? It's so, it has been so cool seeing everybody um, putting their posts up on the comments or putting them on their pages and tagging me uh, to show me that they got their CDs and merch items. So I hope you love them, guys. It's um, It was certainly, yeah, it was probably a bit more successful than I thought it would be, Heartbreak Hotel. So <laughs> woohoo! You guys rock. Thank you. Good evening, Gary. Good evening. Hi, hey, Mum, Denise. Hey, Chris, Lord. Uh, hey, Ryan, James from Canada. How you doing, mate? Uh, g'day, Jared. Hi, I'm husband, Chris, just walking in the door. <laughs> Hi, Jared. How are you? Stu, g'day, John in Wodonga. Uh, awesome. You could, you, am I still coming to the Met? I am coming to the Met, Brendan. I'm coming in February, though. Um, I'll talk to you all about that tonight. Hi, Aunty Sue in Melbourne. Oh, guys, thank you. I, could, I can't keep up with your comments now. <laughs> um, guys, it has just been... Uh, I've, I've just ha been completely blown away by how incredible your support has been. I cannot express to you how grateful I am for all that you have, you've, um, you know, you've done to support me, uh, I guess over the last couple of years, but of course, you know, um, certainly in, uh, over the last few months or so to get this album out and get it to number one on iTunes. I, I can't believe it. I, you know, we beat, we beat Lady Antebellum, Lady A, Lady A sorry. And, um, Pist the Pistol Annies and I just, I'm like, completely blown away because really yeah I was not expecting that at all I'd kind of just resigned to the fact that um, I was going to be very happy with coming in uh, second fiddle to those those guys but um it's all because of you I didn't do it you guys bought the album on iTunes and there it is so thank you so so much from the bottom of my heart and I feel like tonight we have to celebrate so I have um Got myself a lovely bottle of Shandon here. Actually, Chris got it for me when it went out earlier today. Um, and I'm going to pop this little baby and we're going to have some champagne. So if you've got a drink in your hand, doesn't matter if it's alcoholic or whatever, we're going to have a little cheers in a minute because I think it's worth celebrating these moments in, in life. And uh, they come around not that often, you know. It takes, it's a couple of years in the, in the making, each album, usually. And, uh, you know, a lot of planning and, and everything like that to make, make it all come together. And then, of course, you know, the songs have got to be good. You guys have to love them. You've got to write all the songs, make them. And then we put it out into the world and it's kind of like, off you go, little one. I hope people love you and I hope, uh, you know, you get the reception that I feel you deserve. And you guys have just absolutely blown me away with your support and your beautiful feedback on the songs so here we go i'm going to pop this right now i mean the the heartbreak hotel experience with you guys was just it was like nothing i've ever done before it was just so awesome to be able to to share all of the stories behind the songs and the songs themselves and the stripped back versions and the acoustic versions and the demo versions and um, the work tape from the writing room versions and, uh, you know, the alternative mix versions, you know. Did everybody hear the alternative mix of Better Than That that Dan Davidson produced? I mean, it was just so cool because there's really, there's no real platform to share that kind of stuff with you guys outside of, of creating something like that. So as I say, it just, uh, you know, for me, I remember as a, as a kid, I think I told you, I had my silver chair 
CD-ROM when I was a little kid in high school and I'd put it in the computer and watch all of these videos of them and I I always remember it and I'm, I'm you know, a fan of the band to, the, to this day because I, I loved everything that they did and learnt so much about, about them. So, guys, I'm so grateful. Kaz, Kaz Johnson here, thank you for your amazing review of the album as well if you've not seen it guys go and check out Kaz's review of the album um, I had another beautiful review today from Sunburnt Country that was just completely blew me away I've got to open this because I want to cheers you guys thank you Aunty Greta th cheers Jared thanks Stu I feel like I'm sitting here with you guys in the same room so I hope it, I hope you feel the same <laughs> thank you very much Ryan yeah new single number one uh, new single it was number five on the uk country charts which was just amazing and i've got some more exciting news to share about that and some things happening in the uk as well uh that news has just come in this morning and i wanted to share it with you guys first before i posted it anyway you've already been celebrating lisa i love it so <laughs> i haven't even uh, opened it yet i've been waiting for you guys so here we go ready Woo! to breaking hearts not breaking windows with corks <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one, that one nearly landed in the parcel. A mystery cork in somebody's parcel that's being delivered. Cheers. Here I go. Woohoo! And look, the Aria charts are out tomorrow, and I have decided that I'm celebrating tonight with you guys as though I've already got the number one. So here we go. Cheers to you. Cheers. Boom. Cheers to us. Cheers to this awesome community. Um, you beautiful people that I am so grateful to call friends and that I'm just yeah beyond grateful for your amazing support of my music and just me as a person thank you for allowing to, me to be me and and a safe space to be who I am uh, as an artist and yeah it's a bit do a shoey says John good on you mate you are the rogue the right who was it was it um, Mel or something that was talking about doing a uh, we need to do one of the, like a, a yearbook or something, or like a, you know, the guest book from um, Heartbreak Hotel and say who was, you know, who was the the cheekiest, who was the uh, whatever, whatever we can come up with, who was the best at the karaoke night. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. Exactly, Stu. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yes, I've been looking forward to that all day, thinking it's going to be great to celebrate with you guys tonight. Cheers to a number one. Exactly. That's exactly right. No matter what happens tomorrow, I feel like uh, we have absolutely, yeah, this album has just um, changed my life. And because all of you are in it in such a, such a bigger way now. So Troy was having a beer with Katie Jane last night and it came up that you two were actually supposed to be playing at Lizotte's last night. Yes. So everybody my so i think um i think uh i have sh sort of shared before and i've sent it out in my emails and that sort of stuff and if you're not part of my vip club please join it you can just go to my website hayleyjensen.net and a pop, pop up will come up or it's on the main page there to get you to sign up to the newsletter and i don't i don't always send things out every single day like i did in the last little little while for heartbreak hotel but when there's important things i like to let you know first um and of course uh um so i, I think I, I had mentioned in my, my most recent mail out that the tour has all been rescheduled the album launch tour to february next year so we start off in queensland and we move down uh, new south wales victoria and um, so all of those dates have been rescheduled and your tickets will just carry over so don't stress about um, getting new tickets or anything like that and uh, so we're going to be in yeah Gold Coast, Brisbane, uh, Toowoomba, um, where else then we're coming down in uh, Loriton near Port Macquarie, um, Newcastle, Lazotte's can't wait for that gig, Cronulla, Sydney, um, going down to Canberra and Melbourne and Tumut and I anywhere else that I haven't thought of guys the Tamworth show has unfortunately been canned because we're rolling that into 
the uh, my show. It'll be just too close to when I come to Tamworth for the festival, which I'm so excited for, which is in uh, January. If you guys haven't got your tickets, organised your trip to um, to Tamworth yet, get on that. It's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be a massive year this year. It is uh, the fiftieth year anniversary of the Tamworth Country Music Festival. And uh, hey, Justin. <laughs> And uh, I, yeah, very, very excited to be playing there, a double headline um, show with Christy Lamb on Thursday the 20th of January, 4.30, doors open. And um, that is just going to be a huge show. So please get the tickets to that and uh, I'll, I'll walk with you over to the main main stage after, after the show. But I'd love to, for you to come and see that show with Christy um, I'm really excited to be singing some songs with her. So we're going to do our own sets and we'll do some songs together as well. So can't wait. Um, I'm so glad you guys loved the uh, Heartbreak Hotel. So I was saying that there's some really exciting news about um, the UK. So yes, the album was number five on the UK country charts on Friday, which is just crazy on iTunes. Um, and my publicist got in touch with uh, some UK radio stations, reached out, and um, two of the songs off the album, not current singles, but Justin can tell me whether or not they, they should be singles uh, here in Australia too. Um, we listened to them the other night as part of the Zoom, so the 10 lucky Zoom people that came and joined us for the kicks how, how awesome has this last few weeks been? There's just been so many awesome times to hang out. Um, and we listened to uh, these songs all the way through. The two songs are Shot Down and uh, Four Boots. So they have been added to BBC East. So the whole BBC, which is all the Buckinghamshire, Chestershire, all those, the shears, shears, and some of the folks, the whatever the ones there. I'll need to look up where it is. But if you're from the UK, you probably know where the BBC East uh, is broadcasting. So you can listen to Shot Down and Four Boots on the country show on BBC East. How freaking amazing. I just can't believe it. So I'm so, so excited. Um, and I can see you guys all here chatting away. It's great. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to actually play Four Boots for you. And I, <laughs> Jay's saying hello here and people are, are making funny little comments. Jay Sini is sitting right across there um, in the pool at the Crown Casino. Uh, so he just took a photo going, is that your house? And I was like, yeah, what are you, what are, are you in the pool? I could see the water. Um, so right back, he said, sing loud enough and he'll, he might be able to hear me <laughs> across the harbour tonight. But um, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm very, very excited. So I am going to play for you tonight. I've got uh, the, sh the Four Boots video from Heartbreak Hotel and I'm going to put that on for us. Um, if I can work out how to do it. And it'll be great. Here we go. I'm going to watch it in the corner with you too. Ain't gonna wear those whiskey glasses Ain't here to find the last call romances Sink a couple bottles, hammer down full throttle with the boys Check it out Give me that drunk shot, karaoke Give me that high as off kind of party Me and my girls at the bar gonna make a little noise, yeah I didn't come here to get around paid for Or to meet somebody on the dance floor One night, four boots on 
Hang on a minute, get that out of here. I'm back. Woo! No boots under Deb's bed because the boot eater is still with her dogs. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four boots. Favourite song on the album. Oh, Judy. Awesome. Very cool. I do love that song. Um, it is, uh, yeah, you can watch on YouTube, guys, or you can watch on Facebook. Um, we're streaming to both. You can watch on one, comment on the other. Do whatever you want. I can see both of your comments here tonight, so so that's cool. Yeah, everybody's loving Four Boots. Awesome. I definitely feel like that's a, a single waiting to happen at some point. So, um, yeah, just I, actually I'm thinking I might release that one when I head back over to Canada um, next year. Fingers crossed, borders open, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, can't wait. Um, thanks, Sue. Thanks, everyone. I can see your, your um, Lyndon loves it. Sounds great. Woohoo! Awesome guys, love it. Um, I just, it's so awesome to be, oh, this is your favorite song too at the moment, Corinne. Wicked, very, very cool. Yeah, so I wrote that song with Dan Davidson and Clayton Bellamy, um, Clayton Bellamy from the Roadhammers, and he's he's my little duet partner. And I called him up and I said, mate, I'm making this, uh, I'm making this Heartbreak Hotel experience album launch thing and I need you to record a video of you singing our song. And he went, yeah, no worries, I've got COVID, but I'll just nick, in, nick into my studio and record it for you. And I'm like, and he's like, yeah, it sucks. But anyway, I'll just send it through. <laughs> so true professional and um, awesome guy, great friend. And I've been chatting with Dan and the Roadhammers and Clayton about them coming out here and doing some touring next year, me going over there doing the same thing. So I love that collaboration. It's, it's what it's all about, I think, uh, you know what it's all about just bringing people together and music people that love music people that sing play music and um yeah just making it all happen Arnie Greta's watching on YouTube commenting on Facebook awesome that's a great way to do it too ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I love it <laughs> double the streams and Stu has followed Dan and Clayton awesome I, I mean you're gonna love both of their music because they they are really really awesome like um Dan has, I mean, they both have such history. I mean, the Roadhammers have been around for years, right? And they're just amazing. And Dan uh, Clayton's been doing um, a whole lot of rock stuff with his new, uh, it's called Clayton Bellamy and the Congregation. It's like the Church of Rock or something he's doing. It's very, very cool. You've got to check out their videos. I mean, I love his voice so much. Um, and yeah, he introduced me to Dan originally. So that's how the duet Really Shouldn't Drink Around You came about too. And actually tonight... I'm going to be recording my little part for that song for kicks because on Monday night, da -da -da -da, Monday night um, on kicks live, uh, I'm going to be performing better than that. And also um, the duet with Dan, I'm, I'm recording my little part with that and uh, Dan's putting that together and that will be on kicks on Monday night uh, live. So don't miss it. Um, I, I can give you a little uh, preview. It'll sound something like this. Well, it sounds better because he's playing uh, guitar as well. Really shouldn't drink around you. It's a risk. 
is a gamble, a little more than I can handle. Just a touch of a buzz, enough to get me. I'm playing the piano, by the way. If you can't see, oh, gee, I hope there's nothing on the floor. Where are we? Yeah. I really shouldn't drink around you. It's a risk, it's a gamble, a little more than I can handle. Just a touch of a buzz is enough to get me thinking of things. I really shouldn't drink around you. We end up on a back track, getting back to where we left the past at. Think I would learn the lesson, but now what I never do. I really shouldn't drink around you. Yeah, so there you go. I'm going to be uh, recording a little bit of that tonight, sending that through. You love the film clip? Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Should collaborate with the Road Hammers. The Road Warriors. Ooh, the Road Warriors. Road Warriors, an old school wrestling tag team. Well, that would be fun. John, you get the, you get the uh, cheekiest member of the um, Heartbreak Hotel uh, award that's for sure doing your nudie runs every night <laughs> but uh everybody you need to be tuned in tomorrow night kick uh, sorry monday night for kicks live it's going to be an epic night i think dozzy are performing and axel whitehead who was on the very first season of australian idol which you guys would know i'm a little bit familiar with being an ex idler idol what um yeah and i remember watching uh Good old Axel Whitehead on, on series one of The Voice. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to hear, hear what he's got up his sleeve. And, uh, yeah, and the Dozzy Girls. And then it's just the Dan and Haley show for the rest of the night. Sorry, Justin Crossy. Woohoo! <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you very much, for uh, Justin, for uh, having us on, on Monday night. It's going to be a big one. And uh, you love the song and the video you're watching it this afternoon for Really Shouldn't Drink Around You. That's, yeah, it is starting to climb up the CMT charts too, which is really cool. Um, and this week, Karma is number three in uh, CMT as well, which is, I don't think I've ever had a video go up that high in the CMT either. So I'm just riding on a cloud at the moment. Are we doing kicks live tomorrow, Justin? Yeah, thanks, Stu. No, Monday. <laughs> I've only had one sip. Gosh, golly gosh. Mm -hmm. All the comets to kicks country live Monday. That's the that is the uh, that's the call to action, Chris. You got us. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It is all happening. You are right, Dev. It is all happening. Um, I'm so glad you guys all got your bits and pieces this week. If you haven't got them yet, I promise they're on the way. Um, the merch packs, I have ordered bits and bobs. So they're all coming from the suppliers. They are going to be a couple of weeks away. I'm sorry because, um, because uh, of course, I need to wait to see how many people order things before I go and buy all the products because I don't want to have, like, you know, 50,000 you know, sparklers or boxes, back boxes of karma matches sitting around in my house that I can't get rid of. Um, Justin's saying that they can do he can do kicks live every night if we want. That'd be fun. I should have you on this show. You should come on here one night, Justin. That'd be fun. Who wants Justin on uh, hang out with Haley? What do you think, guys? Let us know. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, got to take over Kicks Country. That's it. <laughs> Very cool. So yes, the the uh, merch packs will be a couple of weeks away. So don't don't panic, don't stress. I've had a couple of emails already. Of people saying, "Where's my T-shirt?" And I said, "Oh, I've only just ordered it today. Please give me a break. They're coming. I promise." Um, yeah, because because they're shorter runs. You know, I'm not ordering massive bulk amounts. It's not like I'm you know, Carrie Underwood or something, ordering enough for for the world to. Um, you know, to purchase. Um, it's just me, me and Chris sitting here putting little packages together. <laughs> Justin, I'll fly to Sydney and we'll do it live. That sounds good. We can do a, uh, a hangout with Haley slash kicks live on the on the balcony. Hey, that'd be fun. <gasps> we could have a couple of people around to a bit of a concert on the balcony. Oh my gosh, my head is like tch -tch -tch. very very cool. Let's we can we can make these things happen. You know, <laughs> love it. Yes, please. Love to see Justin on Hangout with Hayley. 
<laughs> if Justin Thompson does a song. <laughs> hey, he probably could. I've heard him sing. I've heard him sing. Uh, I've heard him sing You're the Voice. You're the Voice, Tran. He denies it. He says he won't sing that song, but um, I've heard him sing it after a few. Did. He's got a good voice. Very good voice, actually. Oh, thanks, Kaz. Better than Carrie Underwood. I just don't have a merchandise um, merchandise logistics team. <laughs> There's no uh, Callie by Haley, Kaylee Haley by Hallie by Haley <laughs> merch line yet. Um, yeah, love to see Justin on. Great idea. I love it. Look at this. Who do a bit of Garth? Yeah, that'd be good. Neighbor might not like that. Well, would. We're going to tell the neighbour to go out that night. I'll pop a note under his door and say, giddy out. No, nope, I'll drink, you sing. <laughs> okay. All right, deal. Sounds good. <laughs> and John says, uh, my name is John, not Justin, and yes, I'll be there. Sure. <laughs> Doing a nudie run across the Piermont Park. <laughs> oh, good stuff. All right. Well, it's lovely to... Um, who cares? We care, Chris. If you don't care, see you later, mate. Because <laughs> this show is only for people that care. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, as I said, guys, two has been shifted to February. I think that's where we're up to. I've got a few notes here. I've got my merch. The merch is on the way. Don't panic. It's coming. Now, I'm hoping that the second lot of CDs arrive tomorrow. They were at the manufacturing plant on Monday. And they, they have told me that they're on the way. And I said, I will drive to the other side of the earth to pick them up, to get them to people before uh, Friday. I'll be able to at least post them off before Friday. Um, and I've been told that, no, they'll be in the logistics. They'll be on their way. So I can't do anything quicker, but they are on the way. So we literally ran out of the first run of CDs, which is awesome. That means we've all done our job of spreading the word that the record's coming out and it's out now and that's the best thing ever so um, if you happen to spot it in your local jb hi-fi or sanity just you know pop it to the front of the uh front of the uh, cds <laughs> that's the trick get a photo with it pop it on your pop it on your um insta stories and tag me that would be great i would love that <laughs> um guys i've got uh, i've got a few exciting things um tonight uh to share with you so um, I have actually at the last because I was meant to have somebody else on on uh, with me tonight and they couldn't make it and at the last minute I messaged my wonderful producer over in Canada and said hey it's like 5 a.m. can you like record a, a little video talking about um, you know like what it was like making the album and all that sort of stuff and he's like, yeah, no worries. So he is recorded. Troy has recorded a video for us tonight um, to share uh, his experience of recording the record, um, some stories from his perspective. So you guys have heard a whole lot from me. This is from him. And, and I've got this video for us here. So I'm, I'm going to pop it on. And I, as I say, I'm going to sort of stay here in the side and watch and listen to his comments, probably pull myself another even though I haven't even had much. Um, stop talking for a minute. Shut up, Hayley. Um, and let Troy uh, have a bit of a, a yarn. So don't go anywhere. Take a listen. He's a wonderful producer, beautiful person. Very, very grateful to have had him and his wife in, in my life and uh, helping to spread the word about my music over in Canada. Oh, that's what I wanted to share. Because Justin's on here too, and he will remember. Um, it was... It was this week, last week. <laughs> we did a uh, at this Country Connects event, which was put on by the CMAA, which is Country Music Association of Australia. They run the Golden Guitar Awards and all that sort of stuff. And the Canadian Country Music Association, the CCMA, it's a little bit confusing. Um, so uh, they got together and put on this event, which was like a conference where we had all these speed dating, speed meeting, <laughs> Some of them felt a bit more like dating. Speed meeting sessions with artists and industry people. And it was actually the coolest thing ever. So we got to have these one-on-one -on -one sessions with big radio stations over there, record labels. I got to have a chat with Jess Moskaluk, Mackenzie Porter, um, a whole bunch of amazing artists that are, you know, from ones that are emerging to ones that are you know, doing really, really well in Canada. Um, 
and share my music with them. And it was really, really cool because when I got on with the, the lady that runs the C, CCMA, Canadian Country Music Association, um, she said, Haley, I feel like I know you. And actually a lot of them said, I feel like I know you because Troy's spoken so much about you and he shares all of your stuff. And so we feel like we know you over here already, which was just the coolest thing ever because I mean, I, I'm just releasing music and I'm releasing it in Canada as well. It's being added to Canadian radio on their CBC country and then being played across the whole of North America, which is um, on CBC music. Um, but to actually, yeah, m catch up with these people and I sat, you know, sitting there with Jess Moskaluk and she's like, oh, you just did that song with my friend Dan. I love that song. You know, and it's like just she's sitting in her hotel room in Nashville. Um, she still lives in Canada, but she was in Nashville. And, and it's just so lovely to be like, oh, they know who I am. Yay. Woo. It's working. So onwards with world domination. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to share that with you guys because it was a really, it was a full on, uh, it was like last Thursday actually. So it was, I was trying to get everything ready for, for the last, for actually for the night, for the live stream concert last Thursday night. And um, I got to catch up with all of these amazing people in, in the morning. So it was kind of like, I think there could have been something like 20 back to back, um, 10 minute sessions where you had to be like, hi. Um, so yeah, by the time I got to Thursday night, my voice was a little hoarse. So I wasn't sure how I was going to get through it, but I think it was okay. <laughs> so thank you guys. Here we go. I'm going to share this lovely video from my wonderful friend, Troy, and uh, I'm going to sit here in the corner and watch too, cause it's fun. And, um, and yeah, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Well, hey everybody, my name's Troy Kokel and this is Reluctant Cowboy Records slash Reluctant Cowboy Music. Uh, we run a uh, record label and music publishing company here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit about my experience meeting uh, Haley Jensen, my good friend and your good friend. Um, uh, we have a mutual friend in common, her name is Amy Nelson. And Amy has uh, been having some great success over in Australia and has been bringing uh, artists uh, uh, from Australia to come to Canada and do some writing and uh, performing and stuff like that. And so she called me up one day and said, hey, uh, I have a friend that's uh, coming to perform at the Calgary Stampede, which is a big rodeo we have uh, here in Canada, in Calgary. And... Uh, and so Amy said, would you be interested in writing with her? I'm like, sure, that'd be great. Um, you know, I, I, I looked up uh, Haley's uh, background and saw that she was on The Voice and saw tons of so much talent and, and was super interested in, in working with her. So um, I called up my buddy Chris O'Neill and said, hey, man, like, we're, we're, you want to come write with this girl? And um, anyways, we, we, we got to... We got to talking and we were actually in this space right here in Calgary and we uh, we we wrote uh, we came, we had this actually Chris came with his idea and it was sort of like I think he had building and breaking building and breaking something it was kind of like a I, I don't know that he had like a real sort of solid idea around it um, but he had this really cool kind of um, chorus idea. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we stewed over, over that, uh, for a little bit and, and within two or three hours, the song poured out and, um, it was, it was actually a pretty, pretty easy, write. Not all sessions when you, when you song write are, are, uh, come, you know, easily. And so, uh, but that one came pretty quick and, and we loved the song and, but you know, when you're writing with people um as a songwriter and as a producer when i'm working with people you never know where things are going to go so you know we i told Haley i would i would work up a little demo and and then uh you know as time progressed we uh you know we she ended up uh, going back to australia and and i sent her a demo and and i think almost a whole year went by and and she, and she called me up one day and said hey uh, i'd like you to work on the song and so I you know I ended up producing a, a track uh, for her and um, 
and you know we hadn't really formed any kind of relationship at all you know but i you know all i knew is that i really liked her as a human being and her and obviously her vast talent was was incredible to to work with someone like that and so uh you know we we ended up finishing the song um and you know i i i i'm not saying that i wasn't i was surprised <laughs> But I was, I was pleasantly surprised how well it did. You know, I think the one thing that happens when you're writing songs and you're making music all the time is you fail most of the time. Most of the time when you're making music, you don't do well. Um, that's just kind of the nature of the game. And so when something does go well, you're like, wow, <laughs> okay, that that's great, you know. And and um, but. I think with Haley because it did so well and we ended up uh you know getting the number one song on iTunes and um, um and uh, ended up being number 2 on radio. And it was just it was just incredible, you know, uh we were so sh kind of shocked and surprised and and excited about it. But I think the other thing too was that uh you know, I, I don't know, I think it was the first time that Haley had ever cracked the top five on, on radio. And so I felt really great about that because, you know, we, we, you know, we're, we were able to help her achieve something she hadn't achieved before, which was amazing. Um, so rewarding. And um, yeah, so that was Breaking Hearts. So producing this album was something else. Uh, most of producing the album was just like this right here. <laughs> you know, Haley uh, saw me once in this space, but then from from that time uh, till for the next two years, we basically worked together uh, through a tiny little screen um, and and collaborated on each and every song um, as we moved along. And it was funny that you know, like I I had mentioned we. Uh, I produced the Breaking Hearts um, initially, and you know the weird thing about that is that it, it had done so well, um, and she had asked me to to produce uh, some more songs. And the the I guess the weird thing about it is that I you know in my mind I'm like, well, how are we going to do this? <laughs> How are we going to, I mean, not only are we far away, which is a challenge in itself, but she's sleeping when I'm awake. So we had to find a, a period of time in the day, which was basically from about four or five o'clock in the afternoon, my time to about eight or nine o'clock. So, you know, just, just around dinner time to when you're getting ready to go to bed, that period of time for me was about nine o'clock in the morning till about noon, her time. Um, so that was sort of the sweet spot when we're still awake and we still are not uh, completely bagged or, um, you know, groggy from the morning. So it was, uh, but, but we had to figure out that time. So every day we would sit and chat about, you know, things, what we thought about the song or, you know, and I, and, and of course in a creative, um, uh, setting like that, uh, you know, I had to give her, I had to bring something to the table. So every day I would say, okay, well, you know, what do you want this song to sound like? And, and, and what's your vision for this album? And so I had to really kind of get my head around. I've just got to say something for a minute here. This is like not the normal way that you produce an album, right? So like normally you walk in, you play a couple of reference tracks they go, oh yeah, I've heard that song, whatever. Yep, cool, let's go in and and just lay the tracks down, right? This was a completely different process of sharing sounds and, and you know, list, like literally putting together playlists of songs and living with those playlists for like a week and then pulling out what were the, the sounds and the instruments and the different things that we loved about, uh, you know, that what was it like analyzing what was it that, that made us gravitate towards those songs and and uh it was amazing so I just wanted to cut in there because Troy makes it sound like well yeah and it was just you know this like oh we sort of done but it really wasn't so I'm gonna go back to him <laughs> but I just wanted to cut in to let you know that like this is just you know to spend this amount of time and invest in an album like like he did um 
like we we both did, I guess, over this time, you know, normally you, you just sort of turn it, like you might take six months to write the songs and then the album would be produced in a couple of weeks. We took like two years to write the songs and the album was produced like in a year, maybe a bit longer than a year. So yeah, we really took our time with every single song and I hope that's actually come out in the production and in, in the songs themselves that you can hear that that love and care has gone into them so anyway i'm going to try to try to go back to, <laughs> to troy now without disturbing everything too much hang on a minute around um you know that first that was kind of job number one and then i think the other side of it was that it, it, you know because i had to work on it while she was sleeping um you know it was there was kind of some advantages there because i was like well, there's nobody here to sort of inject any sort of uh, um, opinion. So I was just like, okay, you know, I just sort of went for it. And and the, the interesting part was that, you know, I was able to, to, to come up with some things. But then, you know, when next day when, you know, I've talked to Haley and she, oh, yeah, that's cool. Or, um, you know, what about this or what about that? And so the the interesting part about it was that, Normally, when you're creating a, a piece of music like that, you're sort of collaboratively moving forward in in a, in, um, in in at the same time. And so, because we, I had time to work on stuff, and she had time to listen to it and think about it, I actually think it turned out better. Um, this body of work that I've that I've created with Haley is absolutely hands down the. Um, you know, it's the biggest thing I've ever done musically. Uh, as a songwriter, I've had success uh, in other ways. Um, uh, but, you know, as a producer and, and um, as a, you know, as a music business, we, we, we've we never had this kind of success. So for her and for us, I, I think it, we're kind of breaking new ground. And so it's pretty exciting. Um, and I think, honestly, after having this experience of, me doing some work and then her having some time to think about it and I I don't know that I would change it <laughs> so you know I I might I may end up adopting this model for everything that I do because it really did work well um and a lot of times when you get into a recording session all the players you have a whole bunch of musical people in the room you've got a producer you're in a studio and you walk in with your song and it's like, okay, they listen to a work tape of some kind and they, you know, they write down the notes and what the chords are and, you know, what they're going to do. And, oh, we're going to try this thing in the bridge and blah, blah, blah. And they say, okay, record. And they play the song and try it again. Let's do it in the past. And they'll do one or two more, you know, passes of the song. And, and then that's all you got. And then the producer has to then take that stuff and do something with it. But for this record, you know, we did the complete opposite. Um, so, you know, I, I had a whole day to just, you know, think about wh what I what I wanted to, it to sound like, or or what I thought it should sound like, or what I thought Haley would would like, based on what she had told me her vision of the project was. And so, um, you know, and and it's it was a really interesting. It took a while, but. I feel like the end product really um, was a lot better, and so I took a big lesson out of that. And so I don't, I don't think I'm going to do a, a record uh, any differently ever again. Um, so that's how we produced the album Breaking Hearts. When I think about the songs. Um, of course, Breaking Hearts was our first song um, that we wrote together. And of course, there's a, I have a soft spot for that song because not only did we write it together in this space and, um, you know, I produced it and, and you know, I, I have a lot, a lot of me is attached to it because I experienced the songwriting, the, I experienced the, um, you know, producing it and having it have success and all that. Of course, that, that song has got a special place in my heart. But I would have to say probably my favorite song to work on was a song um, that uh, Haley had this idea, and I think she had had the idea for quite some time. 
and it was you know it was it was basically this idea of being you know i've been shot down but you know i'm gonna i'm gonna keep fighting back and and i thought oh what what a great idea and and um so we we started uh i you know was helping her uh basically finish the song and we wrote it really fast it came together a lot of, sometimes when you songwrite you will just toil it's oh my gosh you you're you're you feel like you're digging in clay with rocks in it and it's, it's just a never ending uh pit of despair um but sometimes you know when you when you songwrite uh, it just comes pouring out and that song in particular i mean man i think we probably finished that song in like an hour or something like that it was crazy but um I really, really loved the songwriting process, but I also loved uh, the production uh, of it was was uh, something that I was really looking forward to because I felt it had a similar sort of feel to uh, a song that was um, performed by Ram Jam called Black Betty. Very popular in Canada, and I believe it's very popular or was very popular in Australia. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool to uh, you know, take this really great uh, sort of groove that that and the song that we had finished and this groove that Haley had, wouldn't it be cool to sort of make a country music version of that? Um, so that that's really what that was about was creating something that that felt um, kind of similar to Black Betty, and we had a, a fellow. Uh, he's an award winning um instrumentalist his name's mitch j incredible talent and i brought him here in the studio and and we we hammered out a few songs that day including that one and we had just a ball with that because there's a lot of weird changes in it and and uh so uh it was just a pure joy so shot down's my favorite um in the studio just because of the uh, process and also because of the songwriting process so Really love that. So I am a recording artist as well. I produce, I work with people, I songwrite, and I also record my own songs and release them here in Canada. And um, when I first started doing that not so long ago, um, I met a guy named uh, Reggie Entienza. And Reggie used to work at Hanna-Barbera which is a animation studio that made the Flintstones and he himself worked on Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo was one of my favorites. And so when I met Reggie, I was so excited to work with him and I wrote and directed a animation that Reggie uh, animated for me. And he was not only was he fast, but he was such a sweet guy to work with and just super humble. Um, you know, when you work at that level, uh, world-class level, you know, sometimes people get a big ego, uh, but Reggie was just the coolest guy ever. And so I was so happy that he was able to um, and willing to uh, work with Haley on the Just Gonna Party song that Haley and I and uh, Chris wrote. Uh, that was, I think, our second song that we wrote or third song that we wrote. Um, but uh, Reggie w jumped on board and, and he did an amazing job. And one of the things I loved about that song was that we were kind of in the middle of the pandemic and all the crazy things that were going on and so we just we just vented on that song <laughs> so we were able to really get out all of our feelings about how things were going down and and i loved loved how reggie and Haley were able to take all of the stuff that we wrote and put it into a visual form and i just love the video it's so cool um, it's probably one of my uh, one of my favorite experiences uh, from the project was watching uh, that video come to life and and um, and watching Reggie do his his work and uh, and uh, you know Haley giving him direction. It was just really really great. Off mute and we're back. Woo! Oh, how good is that? Mel, thank you. So great to hear Troy's experience in producing the album. I know I feel like I talk about him all the time, like everybody knows him and I, I feel like he's like my brother from another mother in Canada or something. He's just the most lovely guy, humble, 
wonderful. I mean, his own music is amazing. So if you have, like, go and check out after this Troy Kokel's music, his own original music. And he's also uh, got a duet, duo with his wife, Joni Deloria, uh, called Scarlet Butler. So you've got to check them out as well, Scarlet Butler and uh, Troy Kokel and Joni's music as well. I mean, so, so many talented, incredible, creative people. Exactly. Stu, that's exactly how I feel right now. Exactly what those emojis are saying. So uh, <laughs> I hope that was okay. I know it was a little bit long. Um, Troy sent it to me and I was like, he's like, just cut it, cut everything out that you don't want. And I was like, I don't want to cut anything out. I just want to leave it all in because I think you got, I mean, nobody's left, which is really cool. I think, uh, you know, it is nice to hear you know, the stories behind how the songs were made and came together and, and all that sort of stuff. So I hope that was that was uh, entertaining, enjoyable. And now you get to meet Troy too. So when I talk about him, you can picture his face there. And, and um, yeah, uh, uh, that's great. Everyone's saying really cool to hear the process. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, it was awesome. Yay. That's so good. Process is interesting. I think so. I think so. But then again, I'm into it. That's what I do for a living, right? So I think it's interesting. But I'm like, does everybody else think it's interesting? So thank you, guys. Oh, good. Lots of it's very interesting. Thanks for sharing. Great to hear the background. Yeah. Nice to introduce you to my friends, my other friends, too. And, uh, you know, um, keep an eye on the work that they're doing because um, everything that comes out of his studio is very, very cool. So I think, uh, you know, it's great to just broaden your musical horizons. Now, I can't believe I've just sat here chatting at you guys for the last hour, but I have done it. <laughs> well, actually, I've let Troy do do a little bit of it. Um, but, yeah, Judy, love to hear the background. It's so cool. Thank you. So, guys... Um, tomorrow yeah, thanks Bert thank you popping your comment up there um, tomorrow is Aria chart day whatever happens I feel like we've already hit number one we have already hit number one with the iTunes but I feel like we've hit number one I don't feel like I could be any prouder or happier or you know feel more connected to you guys you know um, what I'm most proud of with this album is that I didn't just put it out there and hope that ever, hope that people liked it, you know. And I, I see a lot of artists do that. They kind of do the token few posts or whatever. Oh, you got a new album coming out, whatever. But I wanted to take, because we took so long to make the record, um, I felt like I owed it to everyone to kind of explain that process as well. And also... As I say, I find it interesting, so I figure if I do, maybe some other people do. So I'm glad you guys do. So thank you. Um, and, yeah, we found a way to get the music out during the pan pandemic. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, it's just opened up so many doors to me. Um, yeah, where, where, where it could, the possibilities are endless. So, um the world is my oyster and tomorrow I will hopefully be eating oysters, celebrating with a champagne, <laughs> with another champagne. <laughs> oh, thanks, Stu. We didn't like it. We don't like cricket. We don't like breaking hearts. No, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so somebody's dropping a hint here, Mel, because she's thinking, I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. And I almost snuck away, didn't I? So... I said to my label manager today, I've told, I've told my uh, Hangout with Hayley crew that I'm going to be sharing um, a bit today um, about the vinyl. And she's like, Hals, we're not meant to say anything yet. And I was like, oh, come on, I, I can't keep anything from you guys. So she was like, all right, fine, just let them know. So on Monday, like Monday, um, the vinyl is going to be available for pre-order. Now, I am i can't even express to you, like, what this means. to I mean, I, I literally sat there as a little kid going through my mum and dad's vinyls. 
uh, my parents' finals, going through them, popping them on, the, dropping the little pin on, hoping that no, nobody heard me scratch it, you know. And um, I used to get my little tape deck out and have it next to the record player. Now it's making, now I really feel like I'm giving away my age, but I don't care. This is what I did as a kid. So I would put, get my tape deck with my little tape that I could record in and I would put the record player on and I'd go boom and hit record and I'd go, good evening or good morning everybody. This is Hayley Jensen. You're listening to Hayley's radio show today and uh, coming up next is, um, I don't know, Cindy Lauper's Time After Time and I will be singing the backing vocals today. So stay tuned and enjoy the song. And then I'd be like, and then I'd sing the harmony song with this song. And then it would thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, so I, I mean, I just used to sit there and, and make my own little, I wish I could find all these tapes. And mum and my mum and I have said, um, uh, we wish we could find them. All the moving houses, moves, house moves over the years and what have you, they've, they've gone missing somewhere. But I, did, I used to make these little tapes and, I probably just taped over them every week, you know, as you did. But um, so the vinyl <clears throat> is going to be available to pre-order from Monday. Now, the catch is, guys, it's only available. Hello, Nadia. She's in laughing at me saying <laughs> that um, I remember we had the conversation today and I said, I want to tell them. So on Monday, you can pre-order at the Catchies. You can only get it from JB Hi-Fi Sanity or some of the smaller independent retailers. You can't get it directly from me. Now, don't feel like because you can't get it directly from me that it's not benefiting me because the fact that I can get my songs, my music into these massive retail stores is crazy. And it's thanks to Social Family Records for lobbying for me to, to be saying she's worth it she'll sell the records through the shops trust us you know because for them like you know it's it's taking up space on their shelves it's taking up space in in their catalogs all that sort of stuff they've got the stock they've ordered you know all the stock um so it is really important for me as an artist to be able to prove i guess to the big machine that is universal music is the distributor for our label that um that we can sell copies through the retail outlets. Otherwise, they just think you're just a small indie artist that doesn't deserve a spot on their shelf. That's I'm just being really honest with you right now, and I'll probably get in trouble for being too honest <laughs> tomorrow. But um, when I speak with my label, but this is the fact because I I know that you guys love um, to buy it directly from me because you want to you want to help and support me directly this will be the best way that you can support me is to get it through jb hi-fi or sanity that's that's the way you pre-order it online through them or um it will be in the in their stores of course or you can go in and ask them if you if you don't like shopping online you can go into jb hi-fi or sanity from monday and ask them to pre-order it for you or you can do it online um so i'm so excited we are about to go we're going to go on a uh, a camping trip for a week or so and a couple of weeks and uh, Chris has booked a camping trip right right in the middle of my album release which is really exciting <laughs> and stressful but it's going to be great um, I've still got a heap of stuff scheduled for you guys while I'm away but um, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be fine and um, you can on Monday you can jump online and pre-order that and we are actually going that's what i was going to say i've had one and a half glasses of champagne and i'm losing my track um we're going back past by a mum's place and uh, i'm going to go and pick up my dad's record player that's sitting there in uh, in storage and i've been waiting uh to pick that up to be able to play play the vinyl on that on the record player so i'm so excited um and i'll show you i'll i'll make a video and show you guys um so anyway, I think uh, what, I, what I did want to do was just play um, Rules for you before I left the version of Rules that we had in Heartbreak Hotel. So if you've seen it, that's okay. I understand if you want to leave. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but I want to uh, send you that. And yes, I will enjoy the, the trip. It's going to be awesome. 
to just get a, have a little bit of a relaxed time. Um, but trust me, I'll be just thinking about the album and there's a bunch of interviews coming up and all that sort of stuff too. So we've just made sure we've found somewhere with reception. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really nice to get the camper trailer out. And I can't wait to give you big hugs and kisses too, Mum, she's saying. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Same here. Um, happy camping. Yep. Yeah. We'll get the break. We'll get the break. Um, is, is Freckles ready? <laughs> nice, too. I will have to crack out the one for Freckles. Um, oh, guys, I wanted to mention this. Ty, Ty Ladlow, he did a awesome TikTok dance to um, Breaking Hearts. Now, go find him on TikTok. I'm terrible with this stuff, but he shared it on Instagram as well. And... Um, and it was a really cool dance and I've shared it on my Insta stories, but if you missed it, go and check him out on, on TikTok if you're into that. Um, and I'm gonna, I might even give it a go too, actually, while we're at camping. Down in your break. It was a really cool dance, Ty. Thank you so much. Everyone, uh, if you're on TikTok, go check that out. Um, I'm just looking at your beautiful comments. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. We will have fun camping. Oh, yes, that's how I feel too, um, Prue, that it will be a beautiful, special moment to be able to share that. I mean, he, I've got his big crate of records um, down in the shed too, so I'll probably pull them out and have a flick through as well, and um, it's going to be really, really lovely. Brent, <laughs> Brent didn't do one. Brent made an awesome um, video actually with shot down with a line dancing video. He found this line, and it's perfectly in time. And I watched it, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, the video for shot down has to have line dancing in it. So, record label Nadia, just uh, be aware. We've got some. I need to do some line dancing training coming up. I think. <laughs> But um, guys, I'm going to say goodnight. Uh, I'm going to put on Rules. And this is a song for, I guess, I wanted to end tonight's show, you know, just before tomorrow uh, with the ARIA charts and everything happening. I wanted to just share this song because it's, um, I guess it's a really powerful song about, you know, being told that you can't achieve certain things because you're a woman or whatever the reason, you know, that you can't you can't achieve things um good night justin we will have an amazing night you too i will do some line dancing um but uh it's it's really about yeah being i guess i've been doing this for a couple of years right a couple of years you can see the lines on my face you know <laughs> don't you can um yeah i mean the the lyrics in the song are all about that you know um you guys know the words. You've seen them if you've been part of the Heartbreak Hotel experience. And if you haven't, I would love for you to listen to this song. It's called Rules. And uh, I'm going to see us out with this one tonight. So check this out. And we will definitely see you on Monday night um, for Kicks Country. you got to tune in. We've got better than that. And it really shouldn't drink around you coming up uh, on Monday night. But for now, I'm going to leave you with rules. Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. It's been awesome hanging out. And uh, I will see you again very, very soon. Mwah. Oops. That's, that's Troy again. I won't do that. Girl, you can go anywhere If you know your place There's lines that you can cross you show them on your face Get your makeup on To make up for every flaw You can go the distance You just start ten steps behind You can have it all, my dear But not at the same time They'll measure your worth By the length of your skirt See the double standard, don't you ever call it out?
Break your spirit, honey, it's the time. 